So we have a hurricane coming and I got to pick up some supplies. In this video, we're going to be ending up building a solar generator setup. And then we got to meet up with a friend who has uh, something pretty cool to show us. So just picked up some of this flex tape stuff um, with the hurricane coming. I just want to be able to have the option to secure up the door jams so that water can't come in. So also trying to fill up the vehicles before the hurricane gets here. So that, that way we have some fuel. Uh, fun fact, if you guys need discounts on fuel, check out the Upside app link down in my description because you save like 20 cents off a gallon on average and you'll get a bonus $10. So I'm basically giving you free money just because I like you guys. <laughs> but yeah, there's a link down in the description which saves you money on gas and groceries. Okay, so we took all the cushions off of stuff. We're just gonna be moving anything light indoors. I'm gonna strap down the boat. I already chained it to the tree. Um, oh, you haven't even seen that yet. That's gonna be a sailboat project with me and my daughter. I'm gonna take a lot of these kayaks that are high up and I'm gonna stack them underneath really tight. Um, that's what I did with Ian and I really only lost one kayak. We're gonna build ourselves a solar generator because Hurricane Helene is coming to Florida and it could be pretty catastrophic from what it sounds like. So we're gonna end up building a most basic solar generator. So in order to do this build, you would need a few things. You would need to choose your battery, which we'll talk about battery sizes. You'll need to choose an inverter and you'll need to choose a solar panel. We also need to have a charge controller for our solar to then charge the batteries. Uh, that's the big things that you'll have to choose that have different sizes. And we'll talk a little bit about how to choose the right size solar panel, the right size inverter, and the right size battery. We'll show you all the math. On the side here, we have a few things that we're gonna be testing and powering. We have an Iceco APL 55 freezer fridge. Um, this can run on DC or it can run on AC power. DC and AC, what that is, is AC power is your home power. DC power is more like your vehicle power, 12 volt power. We also have a little burner. These are super cheap. You can pick these up for like 10 bucks. And then we have an AC unit. Um, this is a portable AC unit. It actually has its own standalone battery. It can be solar charged and it can be powered in a few different ways. It also is a heater, which is kind of cool. So if you're in those areas where you might need heat, that's something you might want to pay attention to. Now, some of these items are sponsored. And so right away, we're just going to explain. I have a sponsorship from Lightime Batteries. I have a sponsorship from Iceco, and I have a sponsorship from EcoFlow. In the description, I do have promo codes for you guys if you choose to buy these things. But you need to know right away that I have a relationship with these companies. I did end up purchasing my own inverter and stuff. So some of this stuff is purchased and the Bluetooth controller that's purchased. These are things that I bought. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So starting out, the one of the really basic ways to do it would be I actually found this, an appliance cart. We can actually build the whole solar generator on this appliance cart. And that's what we're gonna do now. Starting off, we're gonna pick out a battery. So we got these batteries right here, which are super lightweight. Look at that. These are the Lightime 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt batteries. Right now, these are just over, a hair over $200 each. And if you use the discount code, you save like 6% or so. I like them, they're super small. These are actually much smaller than many other 100 amp hour batteries, that's what I like. And when I say small, they're smaller in size, not capacity. Here is an example of a 200 amp hour battery from another brand. Now look at this. They're the same height. It is about half the size the lifetime 100 amp hour minis are. That's why I like them. They're a great battery. But I don't have the cables to put these together in parallel. So you can get like cables that kind of look like these and they have these little little eyes and you could actually basically run these together and bridge them and you can make 200 amp hour battery out of 
two 100 amp hour batteries. So there's some cables basically that allow you to basically put these together and you maintain the same voltage, but you have double the capacity. So that's the difference between series and parallel. If you're wiring it in series, you double your voltage and you maintain the same exact uh, amps or amp hours. But if you wire it in parallel, you end up maintaining the voltage, which would be 12.8 volts, but you double your amp hours. In this case, since we have a 12 volt inverter, we would wire these in parallel and double them and we would end up with 200 amp hours, which is the same as this one. We're gonna use this one just for simplicity, but I would greatly prefer building a system that's lighter weight out of those batteries. Now, one thing I will mention, so we're building it onto this appliance cart. Another option is obviously if you build an appliance cart, you're sitting it outside, it's all exposed. That's not ideal. I'm doing this so that you can see it deconstructed, so that you can see the components working and that it's not all hidden in a box. Now, if I was gonna build this system, the same system that I'm gonna build right now, if I was gonna build it for my personal use, I'm going to put it in this. So I can build a battery bank inside this waterproof, watertight, wheeled box. This is at Home Depot. Now you can get extension cables for the solar panels, which makes it to where you can have the solar panels outside and the generator battery pack inverter can be more inside your home. Jumping back into here, we are going to start building this system. So we have our battery first on the appliance cart here. Next is we're gonna have to take our inverter. This one has three outlets. You can see three outlets and then it has a USB and then it has a network cable and the network cable lets you monitor a little display remotely. So what I could do is I could have this inside that black box that I mentioned and I could have the network cable display mounted on the outside of the box. And then I can monitor the watt draw and everything. So that's kind of cool. That's something that this one comes with. So we're going to set that here and then because this is the charge controller that I use. I love this charge controller. This charge controller is Bluetooth. It's super affordable. Um, you can get it right on Amazon, but what's nice is it has the MC4 connectors. This is what the solar panel plugs into. And the solar panels, most of them already have these connectors. This is a common connector now. And then it has this little Anderson connector on the other side, which is also a pretty common cable connection. So the only cable adapter that we needed when we bought this is we basically needed one of these, which is an Anderson connector that can plug into here. And it has on the other end, these little terminals. So these little terminals are what are gonna mount onto the battery. We're actually getting very close to being done by then. Believe it or not, it's that easy. I'm just gonna use a little drill with a Phillips head. You just don't wanna over crank it. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Don't have it on drill mode or anything crazy. So. Set that aside. Now it's gonna wanna spark, okay? So you gotta just be a little bit careful when you're doing this. I don't like to touch it, that's for sure. So I try to kinda get it kinda suspended like that. There you go. Okay, so that is now secure. Now we have our little Anderson connector and here it is. If for any reason these are flipped, you can actually slide this down and you can flip it and rotate it if the positive and negative are in the opposite direction that you need or anything crazy. So these are pretty cool connectors. There you go. Now you can see we're reading at 3.3 volts. So we got a pretty full battery here. That's good. 
you didn't even see this, but I actually had this solar panel sitting here. This is one from Bixby, which is a long time ago. I ended up getting this from Bixby. It's uh, that little motor, that little motor that uh, propels kayaks and stuff. They have a solar panel kit for their battery pack that they make. And uh, it's a nice, convenient size. It's well made. It has this kind of Kevlar feel to it. It feels very robust. So go like that. Off the back side, it had this SAE connector. And so I just had to get an SAE to MC4 connector. You see here? So it's kind of like Legos. You know, you just gotta have the right connectors to connect up. But these are such common connections that you easily can find these adapters. So if you have a solar panel that doesn't have the MC4 connectors, just get the adapter. Or you cut, you get your positive and your negative and you just wire up this connector yourself. But it's that easy. So we're going here, and now we're gonna make our connections. And once we make our connections, you're gonna start seeing amps on here. Now this is a 22 volt and it's rated at two amps. Uh, that's under ideal conditions. So right here, red to red, and then black to black. And now we'll start looking here and you'll see, oh, yep, right there. It is running at two amps. Wow. Well, it is running exactly as they advertise. Good job, Bixby. So right now it is currently using this solar panel to run current into this charge controller, which then delivers current into the battery to keep it charged. Now we can actually power things from here, believe it or not. We are already in this amount of time built a deconstructed power generator. Right now, I turn the inverter on. We could then take the power cable for our ice co. So right now we could plug it in. Okay, so you can see there the ice co is currently on. It says 91 and 80. That's the ambient temperature right now, basically sitting in the sun and it's on eco mode and we currently have both zones that set, set to 32 degrees so like right now i actually did some uh tests on this to know what the power draw is so when the compressor kicks on it is pulling power at a rate of 50 to roughly 75 watts the way these work is they aren't running the compressor all the time sometimes it's running sometimes it's not so you gotta look at that as an average, and basically you get what's called a kilowatt meter. You can plug it in, and you can actually see over 24 hours how much true power this thing's pulling. What we found is it actually ended up, I think it was around 0.37 kilowatts in the back of my truck at 117 degrees ambient temperature. Still outperformed the rated kilowatt hour draw in a 24 hour period. It outperformed what the company advertised. Now, for example, this little battery right here, if we ran this little battery on the system, this little battery is 1,280 watt hours of capacity power. And that is pulling roughly 350 to 370 watt hours per day. Do the math. You get several days of runtime out of this little tiny battery. So you could have this panel paired with a small battery, like that tiny little battery there that I had, that 100 amp hour mini, and you could power this for several days and you probably wouldn't see a significant voltage drop on your battery if you had a, even a small panel like this. Now, let's say we want to run this. This is where it gets crazy. Which do you think takes more power to run? This big freezer fridge or this little $10 stove? Which do you think? It's actually this. The heating elements take so much more power. So if we plug this in now, we can just put that right there. We'll just put it right here. If we plug this in and then turn it on, this is where things get interesting. So right now I have it turned on to five, which is the hottest it goes. Let's see here if we can see. Oh yeah, 1,380 watts are being pulled now total between this 
and this. This thing here is pulling about a thousand watts though. So you have to try to do the math to know your amount of watt hours. So the number of watts in an hour, how big a battery do you need to run the stuff that you have during the day? So if I'm gonna run that for an hour, I'm gonna be consuming about a thousand watt hours of power. That's something to keep in mind because this little battery, 1,280 watt hours. You take 12.8 volts times 100 amp hours, you get 1,280 watt hours of energy. That will run this little guy right here for a little over an hour. And then it's going to end up dropping a voltage on that enough to where eventually it's not gonna run. The good thing is, now this is between two different battery types. If you have a lead acid battery versus a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I don't have a lead acid battery because they suck, I don't want one. But a lead acid battery, it is going to not be able to discharge fully in order to power your items. This you can discharge fully. You can discharge this to 100%. You can suck uh, 1,280 watt hours of energy out of this thing and it's gonna maintain a voltage around that 12.8 volts up until almost the very end. That's the benefit of lithium iron phosphate is they hold their voltage better. Plus, you could end up with lie time, they rate their batteries. I think you can get like 4,000 charge cycles out of this battery while depleting it 100%. And if you deplete it only to like 80%, I think you maybe get like 6,000 charge cycles. So if you're you know cautious with your battery and you don't deplete it fully, you actually get more charge cycles, but 4,000 cycles. And that's when you're abusing the battery and discharging it 100%. That's, that's a big perk. Now let's jump over to our EcoFlow Wave 2. The EcoFlow Wave 2 is an air conditioner and a heater all in one. This thing in the front is your cold air. This is your hot air. And then on the back right here is the air intake. It's where it sucks the air. And then on the bottom is a battery. And then inside is a little water tank where it's sucking the moisture out of the air. Okay, so we're still producing power, by the way. We're producing power at two amps right now, which is not a lot. Now we could switch over. I'm gonna end up plugging in this other panel now, and we're gonna see what kind of difference in power production we get. So on the back here, we have a max PV input of 25 volts and 450 watts for a 12 volt battery. So as long as we follow that, we're okay. So obviously I don't wanna create a shadow on the panel, but we are, we're already greatly outproducing that little panel. We're at about seven amps right now on this panel. In Florida, we get about 5.1, 5.2 peak sunlight hours. So uh, that's pretty huge. And just so you know, I did actually break this panel. I actually shattered the glass on the back. You can kind of see it. And it still works really, really well. Let's plug in the, the EcoFlow. And now we're currently running the EcoFlow from our inverter. So check that out. And so the EcoFlow is gonna probably pull around 500 watts at peak, and it's gonna fluctuate probably between 300 and 500 watts is what I've kind of seen and, and, and noticed in research. And that, that's huge because what do people need in a disaster? They're gonna want, you know, creature comforts, like being able to cook food, have food that's cold, they want water, they wanna be able to stay connected, charge their phones, maybe connect up their laptop. If internet's an issue, that, that might be a, a thing that's a challenge though. I do have what's called Nomad Internet. It uses like C-band, which reaches further to further towers. Maybe that will outperform a little bit better than my cell phone in the case of a disaster. Uh, but basically, we just built a working off-grid setup. So we are able to have air conditioning. That air conditioner is good for is for a single room. We can store a lot of food in this and we can run it for several days from a single battery right here. And with this panel currently, we would be able to charge this in about a day. That This one right here, it's a 220 watt EcoFlow bifacial panel. And 
we're producing power faster than we're drawing power if we were just running the ISCO. Now, we could periodically run things like, you know, this little cooktop here, but this little cooktop, remember, is gonna be drawing some serious power. That means this little battery here, while it might work several days for this, for that, it's gonna run about an hour. And then we gotta meet up with a friend who has uh, something pretty cool to show us. Never thought I'd see this in my front lawn. We got our new kayak hauler. I'm pretty sure we can haul some kayaks in this. What do you think? So is this the new kayak hauler? Is, is this what we're gonna haul kayaks in? Is this the new one? Is this what I should be getting? Just asking for a friend. On top of the morning, on top of the wave, on top of the team, on top of the days, on top of my purpose, I do I create. Y'all wanna copy, but we're not the same.